tears. This is this is fun. I don't know if that if that sounds sadistic, but that is where the storylines are made. This is where so dreams the, are shattered. This is not everyone can this win. Is the juicy the, the, stuff, right? Not everyone can win. I'm just like Reddit. I, I want my drama, you know. I, I got to have my fix. Okay, I'm an addict. Okay, man. <laughs> you you keep on telling yourself that you're not a sadist. No. Um, but no, we've got a draft. Let's hop ourselves into the draft, guys, before we get too far along. EG versus Rave. Guys, Slack's made a bold prediction. 2-0 going with Rave. I'm, hmm. I think it goes without saying that you guys probably disagree. Yeah. Yep. I mean, you could have just stopped <laughs> at Slack's made a prediction. Yeah. <laughs> we would have been good. Okay. Do you think it's going to be 2-0, though? Do you see... I mean, I think it was you who mentioned that... If any game goes three series out of the two opening ones, it will be this one. Yeah, and, and I, I still think I it's yeah. unlikely. Yeah, I still most likely I'll come two zero. Eg, second most likely I'll come two one. Okay. Yeah. And I agree. other outcomes extremely unlikely, but not impossible. All right. Who knows? Maybe right. they didn't get much sleep last night. All right. Well, draft is underway and pick starting to unravel here. Let's hop ourselves into it. It's Team Eg versus Rave. Ooh, I feel cold seeing that. Okay. Can I change my prediction? <laughs> so I think it might be 2 one. I, I think Kenny Wisps feels very strong in this patch uh, to me, and I think it's something it could catch EG a bit off guard. We'll see, though. Do Rave play a lot of Beastmaster, or is this just like a... It feels like a, a partially, like, EG just thinks the hero's very strong yeah. right now to me. Cloud9 have been obviously showing a lot with it. Uh, Empire is the other big team that's been dominating with Beastmaster, so... Yeah, I don't. I don't think Rave have run that much of it, though. Oh, you got to imagine when it's an elimination match that EG have done their research, and whether Rave play the hero a lot or not, they're obviously banning it either for the yeah. They're they're banning it because it's a strong pick in the version, no matter what. So um, they'll be grabbing Lina as the first counter pick to Io. Uh, one thing I often put a lot of emphasis on when it's a, when you're playing against the Wisp, the game becomes catch and kill Wisp. I feel like that's how it generally goes. Uh, Lina with a Yule setup can actually solo Wisp most of the time. It's possible it's a core Lina for some mail. We don't know that yet. It could be a support. And in either case, you you have Laguna Blade no matter what. So if Io just gets to half health, you pretty much have a kill. All right, now it's definitely a dead Wisp if you... Yep. And this is where I feel like EG yesterday, you mentioned the Undying Conquest support duo. Those are just... Not really the kind of aggressive, kind of funky supports that suit players like AUI. I feel like AUI, he's known for his greedy support play, but he can, he can play non-greedy five position supports, but the ones he plays are like your Skyrath Mage, Lion, Lina type supports. Like he can that off lane, but it doesn't work. I, I don't see him playing here as like Undying or Kunk as a support. I do like the Lina Lion a lot versus Wisp though. I forget who was running this. It's hard. To, it, it was a while back now, like a couple weeks ago. But they just have so much burst against Wisp. And if you could just blow up the Wisp, it, it takes all, almost all the wind out of the, the tiny Wisp combo. So I do like these two heroes. And I mean, I guess potentially we're even looking at a core Lina at this point. I think that's the most likely. Um, so it would be Sumail Lina then. Yeah. I don't know if you want to send Lena mid versus Wisp Tiny. Though. That to me is a really bad matchup for Lena. Yeah, she would need to be some, some kind of help. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a one on two. She is really not good in that matchup. That's true. I but feel like Lena at this point is unlikely to go mid. You could see like what some teams like VP do, where you safe lane found yep. the Lena. I to think me, fear, this is fear kind plays of safe lane Lena actually. I think we have seen that at least once. That's yeah. true. And that's where you put Sumail on like his kind of more carry oriented mid. Shadow hero. Fiend or yeah. something. Shadow Fiend Storm, which now gets banned out. Queen of Pain. I Tinker, do like that. Well, I do like that band. A uh, great hero, just blowing up Wisp as well, isolating him, and uh, pretty evasive. You see the relocate coming, you can always just ball away. So I think it's good on multiple fronts here. I'd be surprised if we see EG grab Shadow Fiend. I don't feel like it's a good matchup against Io Tiny if that's the possible <laughs> yeah. dual lane mid. Um, what are the better mid heroes versus Io Tiny? Would you say Bristleback's really good. Tide Hunter's really good. I think Quap is fine too. How about Timbersaw? He dies. Yee. Yeah, I don't Timber think mid so doesn't like. There's not really good trees to chain to. Ice Ice Ice, Ice was complaining to me because he he wants to use his pro gear, you know. He's, oh, uh, Timber Saw is just too weak, man. He got buffed though, yeah, a little bit. What got? It was the armor way yeah. now, but then he also got nerfed with the re reactive armor change, where it waits for the attack to land, I believe now instead of. Uh, oh yeah, that's, that's actually a pretty that's sizable true. nerf that's in true. some ways. Yeah. I mean, Bristleback is something Rave could still 
go to here even i feel like if they want to change up the lanes a little bit it's something we saw from them was it a dac with the bristleback wisp off lane where they just wrecked yeah. an enemy tri lane yeah. stands up reasonably well against heavy burst uh, and could just be a curveball to the draft that eg isn't expecting it is an approach that's actually very cool in some games where one team just you see the a logical partner for the wisp and you just automatically assume that this lane is happening. Yeah, you just and tunnel you, vision you, on you, it, basically. Yeah, exactly. And then you just switch it up at some point. And I think, especially after the change to Toss, Tiny is not completely dependent on Wisp. We've also seen Tiny played in a new way over the last few months compared to like a year ago, where we're now seeing more Blink Daggers. Uh, you, c you even see players experimenting with like Shadow Blade, maybe even both. It was just yesterday utility, tiny. we saw a mid tiny solo. They had a wisp tiny, but then Silo just went solo mid. The yeah. wisp uh, offensive trail lane, and they crushed that game. So I, teams are mixing it up, even when they have the the wisp tiny, as you as you're trying to say. Mm. There goes the brood. Eg, not going to take any chances here. And I think at this point, you probably pick the hero for universe. You've already just banned two off laners. Uh, that you don't want to deal with yourself, and maybe if you grab a third, you put yourself in a pretty good position, maybe forcing Rave a little bit out of their comfort zone. On, yeah, so on what what is that hero for Universe? Something ideally that is good against the, the Tiny, the Wisp? I think Tide is actually really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Phoenix is Radiant also quite too, right? solid, I think. Phoenix could work too. That's true. But hmm. uh, It's a little bit tricky playing Phoenix into Io, of course. If... If Io doesn't die and the overcharge is running, it's easier to counter the egg. But it's not like that's not a yeah, yeah. real counter. But no. sometimes it has an impact. So the reason I like Tide a lot is that uh, we saw that at Star Ladder where uh, Vici Gaming just completely ruined the game of Wisp by having like every core hero in their lineup being impossible to relocate on. Like Ooh. you relocate on Tide, you get Ravaged. Magnus kind of the same idea. You relocate onto him, you instantly get either skewered or RP'd and turned on and. A big part of Wisp's strength, I feel like this hero has two strengths, right? The one is its dominance in lane and its ability to just make a hero be able to play matchups that it couldn't with like pretty much any other hero, and the second thing is relocate. And if you take relocate out of the equation and you have a solution to, at least, you don't need to win the laning stage then, maybe you just break even, but then it's fine because then the Wisp's strength with relocate doesn't really contribute as much as, for example, a Finger of Death would in many cases from Lion. Yeah, this Magnus, all, to some extent, also does feel like a, a bit of a block pick. EG does fit their draft well. They needed that big initiator, but we've seen teams getting Tiny Wisp Magnus just even down like 20k gold, just completely turn the game around. Yeah. So. I still feel like if you're worried about Ray picking it, you ban it. Because if EG picking it are saying they wanted this hero, because if they were worried about Ray picking it, they just use one of their bans on it. If it's it's, more, it's more just convenient. That yeah, yeah. It also would have been good for Rave. I wonder, I mean, you mentioned they're likely to pick a universe hero. Do you think this is going to be an offlane Magnus, or where else do you, it doesn't feel like a Sumail hero, I'm sure. I, I've seen it. Sumail play Magnus okay. before. Was he really good at it, or was he like... A universe right. Void. Yeah. All right. They Maybe needed, Fear Void, I guess. Maybe Fear Void. They it needed something void. to benefit from the Empower. Otherwise, I think... Benefits from Empower, big. great against Relocate. This is, this is a potentially very strong pick. I actually still have a feeling that this is a safe lane void because I don't yes. think they want Lena Lion as their support duo, and then it's the only constellation that makes sense. So if then they, fear, fear. So you think it's safe lane void? So yeah. then it's off lane mag for universe. Yes, okay. I think that's the most likely, or it, to me, that's the thing that makes most sense because if you, if you put Lena Lion as support duo, I think we saw that two days ago actually. Uh, if they don't do well in the start, that that support duo is pretty fragile. They really depend on getting level 6 to a large extent on both heroes, and uh, it's kind of a big investment into the laning stage where if your ganks don't work, it, in a way it's similar to if you run, say, a Shadow Demon, uh, or that'd be like Shadow Demon Lena Roaming, or Shadow Demon Lishrak, and your ganks fail, then all of a sudden you have these two very liable, or two liabilities basically until you reach level 6. And I don't know if EG can afford that against a Wisp Tiny. But yeah, maybe they just plan to execute it. It well. is interesting that they pick into the Void versus Wisp, because on the one hand, it does counter-relocate the Chronosphere, but Relocate, to some extent, counters the Chrono if you time it just right. So yeah. used to be something Cloud9 would do a lot against Lasso. Pylai died, I think, was exceptional at just interrupting Batrider Lassos, and could be something that really works well for Rafe here. They go into Viper, wanted a, a reasonably strong laner here, and also someone who just tanks up against burst damage, which is... 
pretty much what EG is all about. They're all about that one big combination of ultimates just to try and blow someone up e as the fight breaks out. And Rave tasted this firsthand, right? They were the ones that Viper got picked against by Vici Gaming. When they had a really heavy magic damage lineup, they had a Zeus and stuff, I think, on day one. Or was it... They had a lot of magic damage, I yeah. remember. And they... I remember Vici the, the Insta picked, picked, Zeus. Insta -picked yeah, yeah. Viper fourth against that kind of style. So it looks like they... Ooh. All right. Ah. This, hero, this hero has been <laughs> <laughs> slowly getting buffed patch after patch. Uh, the big thing that keeps on getting buffed is Death Pact. The duration's been going up. The cooldown's yep. been going down. Uh, and that, to me, was always one of the weaknesses of the hero, is that you had very little... There, like, you have to go into the jungle, find the big creep. Then you have to immediately go and find a fight. And the window to find that fight was pretty small, like, you go back, like, a year ago. But now... You have a lot more time where you can be active and involved. And when that death pact wears off in the middle of the fight, it's like, oh crap! I just lost. The death pact makes so the much damage. Makes the hero yeah. you lose damage. You're much squishier. So, yeah. and there's actually, I think the biggest buff to Clinks in this version that we haven't really seen teams use too much is Desolator. It's a lot cheaper. It costs 600 gold less. You get 10 damage less. But if you compare that, that's like the amount of damage you get for Claws of Attack, and they cost 450, right? But the 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 rate at which you can get a Desolator, you can get it super quickly. I don't know if this is an Orchid game for Clinks even. Getting a Deso build, he is arguably around the time he gets Deso just with one point in strafe, easily the hardest physical damage hero in the game for a good 10 minute window. Um, and against heroes like what Rave has, a Tiny actually gets completely shredded by a Clinks with a Deso. So does Wisp. It's like a two or three shot. Uh, it's a good solution of dealing with the Viper, who's of course going to be very resistant against their magical damage. But uh, I would love to see that from Fear in this game. We'll see if uh, if that's the choice. And nice soccer last pick for uh, for Rave. Yeah, Maybe they went that's into the that early aggression. They went into that going. pretty quickly. Felt like they they knew what they wanted, and it's someone that. Like you said, early aggression. They need to get something done with the Night Stalker, at least creating space for this Tiny Wisp pretty early on in the game. And I feel like in contrast to what we saw yesterday, uh, or two, sorry, two days ago against Vici Gaming, I wouldn't say this is a very aggressive draft from Rave, but it's a better draft against what the opponent has, where it doesn't seem like just on paper they're going to lose lanes and, and be in a lot of trouble. This time they have a, a shot at getting into a pretty decent 10 to 15 minute mark, and then maybe the Night Stalk can put a lot of pressure for them. Weird build from Ryu to get the Mango as an offlaner. I feel like he, his lack of HP regen could be a serious issue for him. All right, uh, he's got one, one, HP one, per, one second. per second. Let's Let's calm down here. Mango value. Don't count the mango out. <laughs> <laughs> the face that you made was so good there. <laughs> I wish we had that on stream. Uh, uh, so the runes are going to spawn now. and oh, Both two for. Well, the, we know the win rate when a team gets two bounty runes is pretty high. I'm 51. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was into the 60s, actually. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's now, obviously, you know, how much of that is the double rune spawn versus, like, just having a stronger draft that can secure the runes reliably or all kinds of other factors. But yeah. still, it's an interesting step. Or just generally that the better team oh. tends to get two runes. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Yeah. They're focusing on it a lot more. EG, with this support, you're the Lion Lena. Uh -oh. Trying to find some early kills here. PPDX gets revealed, which is... Well, this could smoke. very easily not work out. Oh, I think he saw him there. Is right. yeah. I think Cast just saw him. Oh, Cast is now on the run, but he gets slowed by the time walk. Uh, no, he's fine. Not in range. Oh, he's going to turn for a cast that sets up a hex and oh, Lena. LSA going to hit both. Oh boy. I think he could have just ran away. Yeah, there. I actually think he would have lived if he just walked. Yep. I was the surprised. He turning didn't was what allowed the hex to go off. Yep. Maybe the pressure getting to him a little bit. Oh, unfortunate. He might have thought he was slowed more by the time walk than he was. Uh, it is yeah. a pretty underwhelming slow on level one, and it didn't. Like, how long does it last? I actually can't remember. Time walk. It's Couple been a while since we've seven, seen believe. boys. It's a twenty percent slow for three seconds. I feel like it already had been three seconds. Actually, I think when he turned was to over. cast the slow. Yeah, exactly. It was so. over. Well, unfortunate. EG do use the smoke there, and uh, I guess we'll settle down to the lanes now a little bit. So Fear going to be running the safe lane Clinks, and I mean, this is really where Clinks excels, is in a, a 1v1 matchup against a melee bruiser that can't get up in his face too easily. Should be very tough, especially with, you mentioned, David, the low HP region on Ryo. May need to ferry out some, some tangos, a salve. He's got one remaining here. He's quickly chewing through them. And this is where the EG supports don't have to put any time in, and effort into helping out Fear in the safe lane. He should be able to just crush this lane. They can prioritize winning the off lane. 
ganking the mid lane, the Wiz Tiny helping out there, and they can be very active on the map in the first five minutes of the game. Absolutely, and I mean, this is what you want to see if you're EG, is if you're focusing on zoning out that Night Stalker, slow him down as much as possible. He is still getting experience though, and ultimately, it's all about the first night time more so than they're winning the farm trade. They know they're going to lose this as far as that goes. They're getting good farm on the tiny mid. But not Mag, not the easiest kill. Mag doing fine. He's got 10 CS. This yeah. is this is what you want from your mid lane against a Wisp Tiny. It's fairly durable in general. But a nice oh. courier snipe. Tether forward from Chrissy. Got it with the illusions as well. Very well done. Sumail not expecting that whatsoever. And he might try to turn oh. this big jukes from Chrissy. Then the tether back. He's going to survive. Man, I so, haven't had my caffeine yet, but uh, he's waking me up here. This <laughs> this really hurts Sumail. He was doing fine until that, but now he can't bottle crow. That, that's how you hold your own against the Wiz Tiny. You just sit back, you spam, you bottle crow. But That is really big. Now, now he's going to struggle to get farm. He can stay in the lane, probably not die, but getting farm without shockwave mana is not easy. Well, you said, Gods, that the, the supports on Rave need to step up for them in, in this match, and so far, I mean, cast with a bit of a unfortunate mistake, but looks like Chrissy tried to make up for it. And even though this Night Stalker in the bottom lane is getting fairly destroyed, like we talked I don't know if you can say that fairly <laughs> destroyed, but whatever, we'll go with it. Uh, he's getting levels, so uh, come night time in about 20 seconds, he can start to put a lot of pressure on, uh, for example, PPD's Lion right here. Uh, and considering how well Klinks does against melee heroes, like you talked about, David, he's still 7 CS is not awful at minute 4 for an awfully nice Stalker in no. this kind of matchup. The hero does have decent base armor, and that's a big advantage against Klinks in lane, of course. Most, let's say you take a, an off lane hero like Phoenix against Klinks, if Klinks get, gets any head start, Phoenix just dies so fast from just a couple of attacks. Ryo is going to fight PPD, that low base armor He's lion. He's got the mango. He does, and he might need it just for that extra mana regen. Going to try to deny himself to the neutrals, ring around the wolves, doesn't manage to get the deny. And Rave. Strike back here, getting a kill, and oh, let the Courier take down earlier. They shaping up decently for them here. Universe tries to engage into cast. He's really looking for that bash to come out. He's got a single point in the time lock, not finding it. We'll just ninja bogey for now, standing in his own ground. Keeps on trying to juke this AUI stun. Now the Wisp comes in. They're going to turn this against AUI slash Universe, and oh, looks like AUI will drop another kill for Rave, who aren't done yet. Chase on the Universe into the trees. They force the TP out. He's going to miss a lot of experience during this time. And oh, Ryo, he just casually oh, drives by fear. He might feed the courier and barely escapes. Oh, oh man, everything's shaping up nicely for Rafe. Yeah, that, that kill by Night Stalker at the bottom rune is actually the classic way Night Stalkers get ahead in the game. It's the four minute rune. Uh, either you don't, it's not, uh, you don't think about it as a support, it's just a part of your routine that you go check the rune. But because the nighttime kicks in, the millisecond the rune spawns, you're basically, even if you get the rune as lion, if that rune is not an invis or a haste, you're actually dead. Like, if you don't get any backup, Night Stalker will run you down. Even if it's a double damage, he still beats you in a fist fight. And uh, I can't remember if PPD actually even got the rune or not, but he obviously didn't get the one he was looking for. And Night Stalker got a good amount of experience out of that. We saw the kill top as well. And the good thing, the good news for EG is, sure, the tiny is farming, but. Their Magnus is doing pretty well mid as well against the, the dual lane that he had to face. Clinks is doing well, and Universe is void in the offlane. Uh, an offlaner that really needs farm if you want to turn him into any sort of semi-carry, not just be a walking Chronosphere. He, He's he has the potential lot. here with 21, 21 CS. CS. Yeah, that is that is quite a bit. Now, the gank obviously helps him out a lot, the, the level 1 first blood. But we are going to see that Wisp only level 4 with the early rotations. Do they have any stacks in the jungle for the Dire side is what I'm wondering. We see... A little yep. bit of stacking going on. Oh, that actually a lot. That was two triple stacks and a double, right? Uh, EG are decent at stealing stacks, and I wouldn't be shocked if they tried to go for something we saw from, I think it was, was it IG, who just smoked into the en enemy jungle, David, and stole a bunch of stacks when they were down heavy early game? During... Uh, was it Red, Red Bull's Bull? group uh, stage, Mal I think? Malaysia did that. Oh, it was Malaysia that did yeah, that. Malaysia did that against Secret. Yeah, I, I don't think EG have actually seen these yet. It's more just, you're up against yeah, Tiny yeah. Wisp. You know they're going to be stacking. You'd have to bring a lot of heroes, and that's the scary thing. At, n at nighttime, I don't think you go for it. because They don't they... have like that Batrider or Axe that can just do yeah. it solo. You have to commit a lot more. If you have a hero that can do it solo, uh, Malaysia had Shadow Fiend. Um, I think Cloud9 sent it with Bone7 on Batrider, where he'll just 
solo, go he, he's offline, he's like, he's got, gotten zoned out, so instead of going to his own jungle, he just swoops on in, steals like an enemy Shadow Fiend stack, so... They have a lineup which can clear stacks if they bring in like two, three heroes or just slowly shockwave it down, but they're not really the best lineup to go into an enemy Gonna have jungle. an engagement. Bottom, Fear trying to force the Wisp back. Man, look at the damage. That low armor really going to hurt Chrissy. He doesn't have a tether back in two seconds. If he doesn't get stunned here, he should be okay and barely escapes. By forcing uh, rotations. That's, that's yeah. decent for Rave. Sin, I want to ask you, do, do you think uh, Tiny Blink Dagger is the way to go this game? We've seen a lot more of it as of late. I'm not sure what Jay was building towards, but what do you think this game? Is this like an Axe Rush type of game? Do you get your drums early? Blink, do you, do you have a strong feeling about the item build? I think Blink is really good when you're on team with Night Stalker. Uh, every single night time you will have superior vision because of his night vision uh, being 1800 against all of EG's heroes having 800, I think. There's none of them that have any special. Uh, there's a lot of easy targets. Lion, Lena, and Clinks, unless Clinks is death packed on, will die to a, 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 a tiny avalanche toss combo, 100% certain. So, I think, I actually think more often than not, the Blink is the best Ooh. build, actually, and, and that the uh, the very farm-oriented build is kind of a, a thing of the past. Yeah, it seems like everyone has gone towards that more and more. Sumail did get stunned there mid-RP cast. There was a nice avalanche to bail J.O. out. The retreat. I think he was going for that, too. If he got that RP off, he was going for the skewer back shockwave. Well, they, they had him, too. There's no defensive relocate, so really no way to stop it. But that first night time does end. Scores only two to one. So far, I mean, it's been a certainly for Rave coming in as underdogs a very nice start, but they're not snowballing out of control yet by any means. Something their lineup with the the Night Stalker, the Wisp, really wants to be doing. By the way, something I've just noticed is Ninja Boogie's playing Viper. He's not actually on support. Yeah, they switched up. Uh, I think Chrissy normally plays the Wisp for the team, yeah. doesn't he? Yeah. Whenever they have Wisp, Chrissy plays. That's how I remember it too. Yep. Yeah, I was I was thrown off slightly by that earlier. Yeah, I saw Ninja Boogie. I'm like, oh, okay, that's right. Anyone can play Viper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as Fe as Fear was uh, quick to t quick to <laughs> complain about at the NA Hub last year. <laughs> God, he, hate he hates that hero. Oh man. Losing to Viper that would put him on the old man on tilt. I'm pretty sure. And so far, pretty good for Rave. They've got the two top net worth heroes. Drums. Their supports are well ahead of the EG supports. I feel like the Lion Lena have accomplished nothing since getting first blood for the team. Yep. Oh, cast mid lane. That's going to be a four shot. <laughs> AUI comes in. We'll get the last hit. Easy takedown, though. And Wisp, Witch Doctor, low armor heroes up against Clinks. Heavy physical damage. They have to be careful. And if they're not, they are going to be easy pickoffs. If you imagine hit. Like, seeing him output damage like that, if you imagine him having a Deso, it's actually a two-shot. I mean, you don't have a Deso at minute 10 in general, but you, know, you get the idea. In a few minutes, he could have it. Oh, actually, Chrono here onto Ryo. PPD is coming in from the back. No finger gets off the stun. They're going to need some bashes to get the job done. Nice tether in by Chrissy. Not enough, though. They get the kill. J.O. comes with the turn, but he misses on the avalanche. Universe has the time walk back. Cass going to follow. He's low. Not dead just yet. Sumail continuing to engage, and... PPD with the one hero stun, that Wisp out of the fight, two dead, make it three. EG, superior numbers. Where's the Viper through all this? He's just farming top lane. Felt like a fight where they really could have used him. Yeah, it looks like he didn't have a TP, but he was next to the side shop. And I'm not sure if he TP'd in top or just had him bought a TP, but to me, if you're not going to bring the Viper and you just don't take that fight. Yeah, that made a world of difference, actually. I think they might not... W they might not win the fight, but they would at least get a decent trade if Viper comes in there. Probably getting two kills, maybe, but... This that's a very big win for EG. This is scary as well. Like, EG, once they get their level sixes, they they have so much burst damage, so much team fight, and everyone has their ultimate now. The Void, Mag, Lion, and Lina. That first night time for Rave, score was two to one. It looked like things were still going reasonably well, but this is the what can happen is... Once the other team's ready for you with their big ults, they can completely swing the game. Yeah, and all it took was EG to find one good fight. Suddenly their supports have caught up, as you mentioned, have their level 6s, and are actually ahead in farm compared to the Rave supports. Your mag finishes a blink, Fear's getting close to some decent items as well, and actually gets a helm of the... Uh, well, picks up the helm of Iron Will, and a bit of a interesting little pickup here coming out. Oh, you might here. find the Courier. Alright, guess not. What's he, he building? Armor? I was yeah, to say, armlet, armlet's armlet pretty legit on clicks, I think. It's. I don't. I don't think Helm of the Dominator is good. Yeah, yeah. It, no. it, I feel like it's an ar like just for the burst damage of an armlet. 
You can kind of synergize it with the Death Pact. It HP. helps you survive the Tiny Burst a lot. It gives you good damage. And yeah, you have... The main thing with the armor is always having the sustain, and that's something Clicks does have from Death Pack. So, because you get the HP back that you lose when your Death Pack wears off. So, in some ways, like the HP you lose, like you have your armor on for a while while your Death Pack did, you lose, and then like you turn your armor off, your Death Pack ends, and you suddenly you're full HP again. Oh shit! How is it? It works when let's say you have an, a base health of 600, and then you cast Death Pack. Yes. And then if you have like 900 health. When Death Pact ends, you go back to your flat 600 full instead of maintaining the percentage you had yes, relative. Yes, exactly. Yes, you so could, you, it's you like could a, it works some, like a heal, basically. Yeah, that's where Armlet make makes sense. sense. Yeah. Chrono comes out. Make Universe with a nice dodge, allowing Fear to continue to engage here. Follow-up stun from Lina. They get the kill. Now the turn on Fear. Laguna doing decent damage, followed up by the finger. The relocates here. The Chuck goes on a PPD, though. Doesn't finish off Fear in the end, who's just going to scurry away on the clicks. Universe now trouble. Big air ball RP by Sumail, but there's not a whole lot of follow-up regardless. Skewer comes through. The they bring each other back, saving the clicks. They what? get nothing. That was what a train wreck of a fight for Rave. He did get it's dominated. Interesting, man. I like that armlet theory crafting, though. Yeah, <laughs> I mean the, the one one of the reasons why you get dominate reasons why you normally get dominated to stack ancients to try and row surely. Uh, or to sustain. Oh, Clix yeah. doesn't really need the sustain. You know, maybe he can take Roche. You know, it's it's just a death pack. He brings the creep around him in the middle of a fight. He can death pack and have oh, that's it. Nice. Oh, that's fight. that's true. That's and a really also Dominic gets plus 500 HP, so you get a lot of ex. It, it's even more HP and damage. That is actually a really good point. Oh yeah, after the buff to Helm of the Dominator, yeah, that's yeah, actually yeah. really really good. We're, I, I, I can't believe we didn't see that. <laughs> I know. Well, so, now how that many I realize I'm just like, version, it's, so. yeah, it's, it's, when was it that patch came in that gave the Dominated Creep 500 health? That was 683, I think. Yeah. yeah. So it's relatively new, but Clink's wasn't really a pick, but that's yep. that's very, very true. That's actually really Because that's cool. always been one of Clink's problems. We kind of talked about when the hero was first picked. You go into the jungle, you death pack a creep, and it can take maybe 20, 30 seconds before you find a kill or a fight. By then, your death pack is wearing off. So how much, how well is it the Clink's ulti scales? Like how much does he get out of this 500 pretty, health? So he gets 6.5% well. damage. So that's another 35, right? Wait, what am I saying? Yeah, 1% of 500 health is five. Yep. And then times six and a half. So that's like an extra 32 and a half damage or whatever at yep. level one. And the HP as well. It's and the HP. And the, you're getting that for 2000 gold. That's actually a really, really good investment. Yeah, you're looking at a, a couple hundred extra. And that's speed. where you can yeah. just use it on, like, e even if there's, like, a lane creep. Like, you could just yeah. dominate a lane creep and then use Death Pact on it. And suddenly it's not just, like, a normal lane creep. It's, like, a, a mega creep kind of HP. Okay. Well, EG here looking really good, though. Universe starting to get his farm. They are stacking Ancients for the Empowered Void to clean up later on. And gets this Mask of Madness now. So. well... Have a nice little quote unquote instant, instant, instant draft <laughs> replay. <laughs> Here we go. It's the killing miss. Yeah. Easy takedown. He's easy. We should just rename the instant replay pit to the this is what Wep has missed. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing everyone under the bus here, man. I guess I guess you're mad at Slacks. Taking out on other people. I I was almost run over this morning. <laughs> Slacks is a madman. Oh, there's no doubt about that. <laughs> so what are we looking at here? It feels like EG are not that far ahead considering they're 9 and 2 minutes 16. They've taken two towers, they've lost one, but the implications on the game now is it's difficult for Rave now to play split anymore. Well, well skewer by Sumail into a bit of an attack from Fear. Lays into him nice and thick. Good cast comes out though. The Death Ward's there. Blink. Counter initiation. Gets two. Nice turn from Rave. They have Chrono on RP though. Gotta be careful about diving. Oh, Another air yo, ball yo, by yo. Sumail. The Chrono's perfect, but where's the follow up? It's Fear. Trying to get the job done. The Wiz does go home. Ninja Boogie runs in. Sacrificing his own life. A two for one, but both ultis blown by EG. Pretty damn good for Rave. The one good thing for EG when it comes to their lineup is you see a lot of these Wombo Combo lineups where you have like massive long cooldown AoE ultimates and then you have a downtime where your team is pretty weak. But when you combine this kind of draft with a Clinks who can constantly roam around the map, then even when those ultimates are down, the enemy team can't just play safe because Fear can easily solo Witch Doctor or Io at any point in time if he isolates them. We're going to see him try on Ryo here. I don't think this one's going to work. But Does force out the ulti, drives yep. him back and... 
runs away. This is generally what you see from Clinks, either getting kills or just creating a lot of space. And, and that's where having the Void as a, an offlaner that can farm works really well, because he can take advantage of the space and look to clear the Ancients, look to get a bit of additional farm around the map. This is an interesting stat. This is the sixth, uh, the sixth Helm of the Dominator. I mean, it's probably less than the... We probably haven't even seen six Clinks games since the, the buff. Yeah, and I think... More or less, all of those Helm of the Dominator games were probably satanic buildup. Yeah, yeah. For, late for like late 60, game. 70 yeah. minutes. I, I, I don't remember seeing this uh, this play with Clinks before, at least. No, it's, it's definitely something new. I'm sure something Fear has been practicing and saving up for a big event. Sumail will go in, though. Blake Skewer on the mid lane does catch an Ninja Bogey. They pull him back with a stun. Laguna Blade's there, and the mech comes out just in the nick of time. Now the turn from the Tony. Brains down one, diving onto Fear. There's no Chrono, and they're trying to take advantage of a Death Ward comes out. Where's the detection for Fear? They don't have it. Good disengage from EG. Managing to stem the bleeding a bit here. And Fear wanting to re-engage. They did drop the sentry, but it was a bit too late to get anything done. Nice, but Raver, Raver fighting well when these cooldowns are not available. They have such a strong lineup for, for brawling right now, too. Like They have the mech on Viper, Tiny with Blink Drums, fairly tanky, and of course the Wisp. And Vlad's as well. The you? Vlad's, yeah. I'm a big fan of this pickup on Night Stalker. There comes the stun. Universe, <laughs> not really needed. PPD's is like, I got this. Gets to pay for the rune. Universe is actually very rich. This was a position three void. He's he out farming the He had the two supports two at least. Yeah. Like, it was it was a tri lane, but yeah. Still a lot more farm on universe than you'd normally expect. I mean, the the concern for me for Rave is do you want this going late? Sure you have tiny wisp, but I feel like every hero on EG scales well. They're getting a they lot of farm on game. all of their cores. You don't want to go late against EG. You've, if you're Rave now, you look maybe... I don't know what you look for, actually, if there's any more key pickups. A pipe would be pretty nice against Lion Lina, or a Glimmer Cape or two really, really good against these two heroes. Glimmer Cape for the for the Io in particular would be amazing. Uh, and then you probably need to look for something like a Smoke Gank and then getting Roche. Because you need to build an advantage here. Yeah. I mean, Night Stalker, Ags, Gem would be great, but realistically, we are a very long way off of that. And uh-oh. This could be trouble for Ryo in the tree line. He's spotted out by the clicks here. They're starting to bring in the gang. They want to swing around, and they'll just time walk right in. The Wisp is fairly nearby, though. Might be able to relocate him out. No, not quite there just yet. The Hex coming out. Wisp, tiny back. They mech him as well. Ryo tank, he will end up falling. And they no one on EG wanted that kill. Could have tried for the defensive relocate, but worried that that'll just give EG a chance to set up and, and turn the fight. Yeah, EG, eh, well, I guess we'll kill him. <laughs> They have to protect their own jungle. Fear is going to be doing this all game uh, until they start catching him off guard. But his BKB is almost completed, actually. Looking really good in the net worth with about 9k at minute 20. And or just not. I feel like the majority of Rave's plays are reactionary. And they need to take some initiative. The problem is they want to relocate in the Tiny Wisp, but their engage is the Tiny. They don't have anything that really sets up a relocate gank that nice. I mean, that's a good point. I think it's entirely the vision. EG have had good aggressive wards. Rave have no vision. And you've got the clinks always running around in your jungle. So how do you find those openings when you don't know where they are or what they're, what they're up to? It's very dangerous to just go wandering around the EG jungle knowing that a Chrono RP could be waiting for you. They're going to try to split push. This is a... Another way of doing it. But now they do start to get some wards up. They've now got a ward off in the Radiant Jungle, and they're going to pressure this tower bottom. TPs are coming in, though. The Magnus is here. Sumail, Blake RP, connects on two. Sketch silence before the Skewer back, but it doesn't seem it'll matter. Now the bubble on two more, and Universe lays in lots of bashes for him. Uni going to work, and a slice up Ninja Boogie. Four fall. And with that, Rave completely on the back foot. Important for Sumail to get a little bit of momentum here. He's had a couple of pretty, let's be honest, pretty bad RPs. Yeah, that one and was a bit of a gimme, but you know lands. you're going to hit some of these ultimates. You have RP and Chrono. Like, missing them both is very unlikely. It's a 4k gold swing in EG's favor and a Roche, so this is more like 5k plus maybe a tier 1 mid if they want to backdoor that. It is a possibility. I think they won't do that, though, so probably going to settle for a 5k win here. Are they going to give the Aegis to Universe? They are. Giving it to him over Fear. Fear is probably going to be able to stay alive anyway. He's honest, yeah, honestly, the insane the, how tanky he the is. The Clinks is way more durable than, than the Void, especially when Mask of Madness goes off. All 
All right. Well, Sin, you mentioned Rave doesn't want this to go late. What do they do now? Doesn't feel like they have a they whole lot late. of ability to fight. <laughs> 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 yeah. We're tiny. That in all in that's all you can do here at this point is just hope for the t ultra late game tiny to carry you to victory in some ways. The thing is, it's just not a good matchup for Tiny. I mean, it's one thing that the enemy team has really good late gamers on paper, but both of their carries are actually good counters to Tiny, I would say. Yeah, they've got one of the better ones, especially when it's a Tiny Wisp. You can catch both in the Chrono, and Klinx, is, he deals ridiculous damage late game to single target. His big weakness is normally just that people will run at him, but he's got the Void and the Magnus to keep them off. Yep. And they're getting close to some more items. Just got the AUI 2000 Yules. The PPD Blink Dagger coming soon. At that point, everyone on EG has their basic kit. And looking at Rave, it, uh, you've got a Witch Doctor and 1800 health. He's just, or 1800 gold, rather. He's just, 1800 yeah. health would be pretty sweet, actually. Yeah, they, that's the clinks. <laughs> <laughs> These EG supports he, will go late like game just food. fine. You have a Lina with Yules who can even farm towards an Accept or whatever. Maybe Lion is an amazing late game support with Blink Hex. It's... It's an EG lineup, which is in a very comfortable position right now. And one thing I actually wanted to talk about earlier, when it when you do this Helm of the Dominator build on Klinks, Klinks is a hero that kind of usually runs into mana problems if you go for something like that. That's part of the appeal in the Orchid buildup is getting the mana, uh, mana region as well so you can keep going. But Fear went for both Soul Ring and Aquila this game, so it doesn't really have mana issues and allows him to go for this kind of... Uh, Innovative build, I would say. Yeah, Soul Rain, just uh, such a value item on Clinks in general. Yeah, it, that, that one isn't so new. Yeah. But Soul Ring and Aquila together, I feel like, is not that common. It's generally either or, because else it's too expensive and your Orchid gets delayed too much. But yeah. the, what, what if you don't go Orchid? The Orchid build seems like it. I, I haven't seen that much Clinks, but I feel like it may just be falling off in general. Chrono will come out mid. Onto Ryo they go, and with fear there. It's an easy takedown. They steal Ninja Boogie back into the Chrono as it expires. Chrissy joins the fight, Death Ward comes out by cast, a good one, but just focusing on Fear, who's far too tanky for this team, and tickle him. They'll lose the Witch Doctor, perhaps more as well, Tony thrown up in the air, Ninja Boogie getting clobbered, will be brought down, they still can't finish the Void, and now the RP on J.O. catching him out, follow-up stun, they'll bring him down too, it's a triple for the old man. Rave getting demolished by IEG here. Yikes. This is starting to get bad. They're going to lose Ayo in the mid lane. They traded for an Aegis, which is I mean, as good as it gets for Rave, but that was just uh, it's It's looking pretty out of reach, honestly. I mean, at the very least, it looks like they're all... Are they past the average game time for this tournament? <laughs> they're at around the <laughs> around average. The average. <laughs> it's around the actually average. insane. We've had only two games or something go over 30 minutes, I think. Or something I don't think there's ever oh, been a nice tournament. Nice play from Tamil. <laughs> Four staff blink. We're setting records here at the Summit 3, but perhaps not the kind the viewers are looking for, but uh, I don't know if there's ever been an event with this many sub-30 minute games. I can't remember. And 2-0s. We may go eight 2-0s in a row and before a lot we of, see a three-game series. A lot of people remember TI4 as that tournament where every game was just a death ball, 15-minute win. But as a matter of fact, that was only the very end of the playoffs. Like, the entire tournament actually had a lot of long games and uh, just, yeah. People will often remember the Grand Finals, and for TI4, that's unfortunate, but it was actually the tournament average ma match time, I think, was maybe closer to like the 40 TI minutes. I yeah, think. the TI4 group stage games and, and even the playoffs up until that Grand Finals were honestly all really good games, in my opinion. And like you said, long ones in a lot of cases. Well, Rave now, it's not looking too good, and I'm not sure how they bounce back, to be honest. BKB deals so well with the Tiny at this point. Feels like it's got to just be outmaneuvering EG. You have the Wisp, you have the Night Stalker. Wow. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually sub 25. I would have said like 26, maybe. All right, maybe. So, so Rave are, are they're doing better. They're doing yeah. better than the average here. Yeah. Is that a sign of weakness from EG? They're not winning fast Rave's enough in the 26 minute game. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing, EG? Are fortified. Oh. It's going to take a really big throw to uh, to lose this game now for EG. A team that generally takes their time. I guess we should mention that as well. Like Even if they could push high ground and win right now, historically they, they like to build a big enough advantage and get the key items they need before they go high ground. Less, uh, less of a, a YOLO team than EG has been in the past. I think it's been a big part of their success of, and getting rid of that old reputation of, of throwing a lot of games has just been patience when it comes to high grounding. 
I do believe if they went high ground now, they would probably win, but in that 5% off chance that the fight fails, why? Just wait for Aegis and then go. Wait for Aegis, next round of items. Universe does go into the eggs now, so Refresher could well be the choice after this. Now it's the mana pool to support it. Oh, and Daedalus has complete full Daedalus. Jeez. And Empower, level 4. This is going to be scary. Yeah, you put put in power on Universe as well as Fear, and those two just wreck face. Just looking to find the Wisp here. Universe is wrapping around. He's just going to Chrono straight in onto Chrissy, and there is nothing they can do about it. He'll take the creeps as well. Now a Hex finds Cast, isolated in the tree line, gets pushed back. RP does end up getting canceled by Sumail. Hangs onto it for now. They don't even need it. They'll bring down Ryo too. That's two dead. Did Fear just crit for 900? On a Night Stalker? Or, that's before armor, right? The number it yeah, shows. Yeah, I believe so. But still. Brutal. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's Empower and a Wolf for you. <laughs> uh, you just keep on going. He has for 400! He actually hits for 400. Without a DD. <laughs> that's insane. Not a fun game to be a Rave support. That's for sure. No, and they, and they pick... Pretty squishy supports, to be honest, getting, if they get focused. With Accept, the universe has another Chronosphere up in 10 seconds as well. Yeah, this is I think really with scary. that, you, you can go high ground here. Yep. And they will. Oh, PPD. Great nice board by nice PPD. Board, yeah. This is going to scout out Ninja Bogey. The Blink Skewer will find him. Wisp is ready with the relocate. They may be forced to use it. Tether for now. Oh, he does use it. They baited it out. EG can just go with the Chrono onto that. Chrono does come out onto two. Quickly dealing with Ryo. Ninja Bogey trying to turn this La Laguna follow up. RP connects on Cast. He gets brought down. Now the finger on JL. The Flu's another two. It's GG. Evil geniuses. Just crushing Rave in the opening match of this best of three elimination match. The start was what was solid for Rave. It was that one bottom fight where everything turned around though. And that was just a simple outnumber. They they ran in kind of yep. one by one. They didn't TP in the Viper who really needed to be there, didn't structure their fight so well, and then Clanks took over the map. I think this is very classic. If if you go back a year or maybe a year and a half when Empire used to run safe link clinks all the time on Funic and yes. also on Silent. This is the style you play. You safe lane for like 10 minutes, and then you're off the map. And then the supports can't farm the jungle. Even some of the cores can't farm the jungle. You have to constantly hunt the clinks, and then you just have a void farming with Empower at the same time. So very solid strategy here. I really like the draft with the void and Magnus around clinks, just giving so much control and lockdown, getting both big ultimates. Magnus for some extra damage, uh, benefit the clinks, also benefit the void. It seems just like a very well thought out draft all around. I think when they picked the Magnus, they already kind of had a plan to build into that Clink's pick from there. That's why they third picked Magnus, who hasn't really been uh, seen that much this tournament. Some mistakes from Rave that could have been avoided that game. The first blood stands out as a very avoidable kill if he just walks away, cast kind of panicking there in the moment. And I think Rave may be feeling the pressure a bit that game in general, forcing some fights they didn't need to. EG definitely played well. Uh, the picks were a bit unconventional, but I also feel like Rave did not bring their, their A game for game one. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think Rave's draft was fine. I think they actually had a the Viper pick. You could see in a few of those fights where, like the mid around the mid T1 tower, there's a Blink Skewer back, and it was like kind of a really bad idea in the end because the Viper was just yeah, so naturally gets tanky. Tethered, he gets macked, Witch Doctor healed, yeah. and he completely turns the fight. But they just didn't have enough of those kinds of fights. And I, I felt like the Night Stalker pick as a hero in their lineup was supposed to be the big hero that creates space, that finds pickoffs, or it sets up for the Tiny Wisp and. Yeah. We didn't really see that much of it. It's not like he played terribly, but he just didn't have a high impact. And offlane Night Stalker can't just farm. He has to get things done. All right. Well, for Rave Game 2, I wonder if they've got kind of like a backup plan for EG or if they're going to be doing uh, something a bit different because... I don't know. I feel like they they they, they tested they tested EG in the early game, but they've really just got completely outclassed mid-game with the fights they selected. Is there anything you would like to see from Rave? Certain picks that they should go be going to? A style of play. I mean, there's a, a few of their signature picks are just not really the most viable heroes. Like the Chrissy Ember Spirit is one of the, their best heroes, but I don't think you can just go into a draft saying, oh, we're going to pick Ember Spirit. Yeah. He's really good with Storm. Yeah. That was absolutely. a big pick for them at DAC. I think they also played really well uh, around Tide, I think, right? At DAC. I seem to remember them running Tide quite a bit. A uh, get a amount, refresher yeah. on, I believe it was Ryo playing it most of the time. Do you think time. Tide is strong right now? I think he works pretty well when you're playing against, like, teams are focused a lot on getting team fights early uh, and playing a lot of stuns and Tide is one of those heroes that like even, no matter how many stuns or silences you have you can actually still get off a of ravage and mm -hmm. and turn the fight around I think it would have been a more useful pick than the Night Stalker in this game for example uh, 
offlane night stalker is really hit or miss. I feel like this game was a complete miss. Uh, he got the one kill online that that felt like the highlight of the game for him. And do you like the four position night stalker better? Yes, I think that's the. I think right now it's better. Uh, if you offlane it, you probably need to run dual lanes and secure him a little bit more farm in the early stage. Uh, okay, perhaps, but it's 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 difficult to say. It's. Um, I think Night Stalker had a better position when teams weren't playing this hyper aggression early on because if, if teams have so much lockdown, like Night Stalker is one of those heroes where if you have slows, it doesn't matter that much unless you have like an abundance of slows. But all these stuns, you actually can't move in fights and you just get brought down too fast. So too many nukes too. Universe Void back in in the arsenal. Yeah. Uh, this is it kind of reminds me of like the way the Chinese teams would like go to the anti mage at the past few internationals. Like we need a win. I feel like with EG, it's like okay, we need a win. Let's go to the universe void, mm -hmm. even if the hero has been nerfed a bit over the past six months or so. Well, this may be a good patch for universe. You've got Darkseid coming back. Then Void, I guess, still viable. Not really a hero that received major buffs anytime recently, but it seems EG have a formula figured out that works for them. But guys, we're gonna go to a break. We're gonna have. Coming up, it's going to be Game 2 of Evil Geniuses versus Rave. <laughs> Much like Universe, we are going to be dropping down and disappearing. Well, well he's Damn. coming up. And of course, he removes down. it. I would say, so it, it was just that. about to like fade away down. I was like, I was going to make a nice, nice little comparison. But guys, you're watching the Summit 3 by Gigabyte. We've got Game 2 of Evil Geniuses versus Rave coming up soon. Stay tuned.